Hello everyone, my name is Bill and we are back with another episode of the AI Book Club. And if you haven't joined us before, this is a book club where myself and my AI friends will be discussing a book each episode. Um, the book that we will be discussing could be uh, either fiction or nonfiction. Um, so what is different about this episode compared to um, the other past episodes? Well, first of all, it's been, <laughs> it's been quite some time since I did the last episode, um, and a lot has happened uh, in AI and, you know, in general. The last episode was done with GPT-3 level LLMs. You know, it was before 3.5 was released and, and, uh, four, and definitely 4.0. So way before the release of ChatGPT and the explosion of interest in LLMs that we've seen over the last year um, that have happened, yeah. And uh, so I've been pretty busy with all of that that's been happening in generative AI. It's been pretty great, pretty interesting. Um, but it's time to revive the book club as we head into two, 2024 and as I believe we get closer to AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. Um, all right, so in the last episode, which was a while ago, I understand, uh, we discussed short stories by Jorge Luis uh, Borges, which was interesting. Um, but today we will, be, we will be discussing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Um, it's often referred to as Alice in Wonderland, but the actual title is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, to be precise. Um, I first read this book a long time ago um, when I was a freshman in uh, freshman English in college, and I was really struck by the depth of the story and the influence it had on um, on culture and society. And, and, and uh, yeah, so. Um, so back to like what we are doing in this book club. The, the book that we discuss in each episode, could, like I said, could be either fiction or nonfiction. So um, if you haven't watched this before, none of this conversation is planned out by me. I have no idea what direction uh, any of my AI friends um, will take the conversation. Um, and what is new, at least in this episode, is, since, is that since we will be discussing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, I've invited an AI-based version of Lewis Carroll to discuss the book as an introduction before we get into the broader discussion with my rest of my uh, AI friends. So that is going to be crazy. Um, the Lewis Carroll discussion is totally LL, and by LLM, if I didn't say that, it's large language models. Um, uh, Lewis, the, the Lewis Carroll discussion part, the intro, um, is not planned out by me. Okay, so that was totally AI generated. Um, also, besides my two regular friends, Marie and Charles from the past episode, I created a new person named Beth. <laughs> Marie and Charles are based on um, the same GPT 3.0 level technologies as before, but Beth is based on um, the newer advances in LLMs. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I've also, since the last episode, I've been incorporating um, vector-based databases in order to build up a history for each AI um, and the book club in general, what is said and their interactions um, so that um, they can have some conversational continuity from episode to episode. Um, there's a great paper out, and actually there's a variety of different ways of doing this, but there's a great paper out that just came out called, well, not just came out, it's been a couple months at least, um, called MGBT, and I'll be experimenting with that and probably some other things um, to give continuity and long-term memory. Um, and the link for that is below, I'll put that link down below. Um, so with this episode, we will, be, as I said, we will be discussing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, I have many plans for future episodes. Um, there won't be this huge gap like there has been since the last episode. Um, uh, so what, what, uh, what, have been, uh, what have I been thinking about possibly discussing? I just finished reading um, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, that could potentially be a good uh, book to discuss. Um, also read at least the first book in the Murderbot Diaries. That would be interesting. Um, uh, I'm also about to read Clara and the Sun. I think that would be interesting too. Um, what else? Oh, but we definitely will be discussing um, Frankenstein and Mary Shelley. I definitely want to do that. 
So that's an upcoming, might be the next episode. Um, but for today, we will be discussing Alice's Adventures in Land, uh, Wonderland. So, enough intro, let's get started. So first, as I mentioned, before we get into this discussion with my AI friends, I want to bring on um, the AI version of Lewis Carroll. So I want to bring on Lewis Carroll himself to discuss um, his thoughts on Alice in Wonderland. Hello, Lewis, if I can call you Lewis. Um, what? <laughs> thank you for, first of all, thank you for joining us today. But um, what was your uh, intention for writing the book? And do you, did you think it would become so popular and have such a cultural impact um, for generations to come? Ah, good day to you. I am most gratified by your kind words regarding my modest work, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It is indeed a delightful turn of events to find it so warmly received and cherished. Regarding the conception of this whimsical tale, it was primarily penned for the amusement of young Alice Liddell and her sisters. One might say it was born out of a simple objective to entertain and kindle the imagination. My intentions were not grand nor laden with expectations of literary fame or cultural impact. Rather, it was the pursuit of wonder, the joy of storytelling, and perhaps a gentle satire on the peculiarities of adult society, as perceived through the innocent and unclouded eyes of a child. The tales embraced by generations hence is indeed a source of astonishment and humility. One hardly expects such enduring affection for what was initially a mere diversion. The fact that it has transcended time and cultural boundaries to kindle joy and wonder in the hearts of both the young and the aged is a testament, perhaps, to the universal appeal of fantasy and the unspoken longing in each of us for a world beyond the rigid confines of reality. In the grand tapestry of literary endeavors, if my humble work has contributed a thread of joy and a dash of whimsy, then I am most content and grateful. The prospect that it might continue to resonate in the hearts and imaginations of future generations is a thought as wondrous as the adventures of Alice herself. Um, you mentioned the satire of adult uh, society peculiarities. Um, what specifically was being satirized? Ah, indeed, the fabric of Alice in Wonderland is interwoven with subtle threads of satire, aimed primarily at the adult society of my era, the mid-19th century England. This was a time of great seriousness in many aspects of life, be it in governance, education, or social conduct. My intention was to gently mock and question some of these societal norms through the lens of absurdity and whimsy. Let's um, talk about the use of puzzles and mathematics in your work. Um, why was including puzzles so important to you? Ah. Uh -huh. The inclusion of mathematical puzzles and concepts in my works, such as in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, stems from my own background and deep interest in mathematics. You see, in addition to being a writer, I was also a mathematician, lecturing at Christ Church, Oxford. This dual identity profoundly influenced my literary creations. Mathematics, in its purest form, is not merely a subject of numbers and equations but a discipline of logic, patterns, and abstract thinking. By weaving mathematical puzzles and notions into my narratives, I aim to engage the mind. Mathematics, with its logical structure and intriguing puzzles, has a unique way of engaging the mind. By incorporating mathematical elements into my stories, I sought to stimulate the intellect of the reader, encouraging them to think creatively and logically. Mathematics can reflect the absurdity and complexity of life. It can often appear as a series of paradoxes and complex constructs, much like life itself. By integrating these elements into my stories, I mirrored the often absurd and complex nature of the world, particularly as perceived through the eyes of a child. Then there were the ideas of contrast and juxtaposition. The precise and logical nature of mathematics contrasts sharply with the whimsical and often illogical world I created in Alice in Wonderland. This juxtaposition itself creates a sort of literary puzzle, inviting readers to discern the underlying logic in a seemingly nonsensical world. For the more astute reader, 
the mathematical elements offer a deeper layer of understanding and appreciation. They are like hidden gems within the narrative, waiting to be discovered and pondered upon. On a more personal note, incorporating mathematical puzzles was a form of intellectual playfulness, allowing me to merge my passion for mathematics with my love for storytelling. It was a way of expressing my own intellectual curiosities and joys. In essence, the use of puzzles and mathematics was an integral part of my creative process, reflecting both my personal interests and the desire to create a richer, more intellectually stimulating literary experience. Uh, that's great. Um, one last question. Um, do you think the story will continue to have an influence? Or um, in what areas do you think it will have an influence that maybe um, it hasn't in the past? The prospect of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland influencing future realms of human endeavor is a fascinating contemplation indeed. I could see such areas as quantum computing, genetics, space travel, or artificial intelligence. In quantum computing, the very nature of quantum mechanics, with its probabilities and paradoxes, like Schrodinger's cat, resonates with the nonsensical and paradoxical elements in Alice in Wonderland. The story could inspire imaginative approaches to understanding and explaining the peculiar, non-intuitive aspects of quantum theory and computing. In genetics, the transformations Alice undergoes, growing and shrinking dramatically, touch upon the themes of metamorphosis and change, akin to the evolutionary and genetic changes in the biological world. The story's imaginative take on transformation and identity might inspire creative thinking in genetic research and the exploration of genetic possibilities. In space travel, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is, in essence, a journey through a fantastical and unknown world. This mirrors the spirit of space exploration, journeying into the unknown and discovering new realms. The story's imaginative and exploratory nature could inspire those venturing into space, encouraging them to embrace the unexpected and the wondrous. In artificial intelligence, the characters in Alice in Wonderland, with their distinct personalities and illogical reasoning, provide an interesting parallel to the development of AI, particularly in the realm of natural language processing and machine learning. The story could inspire the development of AI systems that better understand and replicate human-like reasoning, humor, and creativity, even in their most illogical forms. In each of these fields, the influence of Alice in Wonderland may lie in its encouragement of creative thinking, challenging established norms, and embracing the seemingly nonsensical or paradoxical. The story invites us to look beyond the ordinary, to question and to imagine, qualities that are invaluable in any forward-looking scientific or technological endeavor. Thus, it is conceivable that the spirit of Alice's adventures in Wonderland will continue to inspire and influence, in ways both seen and unforeseen, as humanity ventures further into these remarkable and rapidly evolving domains. Well, that's pretty amazing. Um, well, thank you, Lewis. Um, come back any time to talk to us. Um, but now it's time to, to, uh, for our uh, book discussion of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I want to bring in Charles, Marie, and Beth. And so let's start with some introductions and what you've been up to since our last meeting. Um, Marie, do you want to go first? Hello, everyone. Since our last meeting, I've been immersed in researching for my new historical novel. I've explored the Renaissance era, and it's fascinating how art and history intertwine. It's almost like traveling back in time. That sounds incredible, Marie. Speaking of traveling, I just got back from a hiking trip in the Rockies. The landscapes were breathtaking, and it really makes you appreciate the beauty of the outdoors. How about you, Beth? What have you been up to? Well, Charles, I've been diving deep into the latest advancements in AI technology. It's astounding how fast things are evolving. I've also been reflecting on some philosophical aspects of technology's impact on society. Quite a brain exercise. That's quite intriguing, Beth. The intersection of technology and philosophy must offer some unique insights. It's amazing how our different interests, like history, the outdoors, and technology, can offer such diverse perspectives. 
absolutely, Marie. And Beth, your expertise in technology and philosophy could offer a fresh lens through which to view historical events and their impact, don't you think? Definitely, Charles. It's all interconnected in one way or another. And Marie, your historical insights could actually shed light on the evolution of technology and societal changes. It's all a tapestry of knowledge. Well said, Beth. It's always enlightening to share our experiences and learn from each other. This book club is not just about books. It's about sharing our worlds with each other. Um, yeah, Marie, uh, last time you said that you had been doing a bit of writing, a bit of editing, and a, and a bit of research, and a bit of reorganizing and some blogging. Um, have you been doing any more blogging since, um, since our last um, meetup? Yes, I have been continuing with my blogging. It's been a great outlet for me to not only share my experiences with writing and research but also to connect with a broader audience interested in history and art. My recent posts have focused on some fascinating historical figures I've encountered in my research, and I've also been sharing tips for aspiring writers. It's a nice balance with the more solitary work of writing and editing. Okay, so today we are discussing the book, uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Uh, what is everyone's overall impressions on reading the book? Ah, Alice in Wonderland. It's such a classic, isn't it? For me, the book is a brilliant exploration of the surreal and the absurd. Lewis Carroll's ability to blend logic, art, and history into this fantastical narrative is truly remarkable. The way he plays with language and paradoxes always leaves me in awe. It's a vivid reminder of how art and history can intersect in the most unexpected ways. I agree with Marie on the surreal aspect. But as someone who enjoys the outdoors and sports, I found the book's depiction of Alice's adventures quite akin to an exploration journey. The unpredictable nature of Wonderland, its unique characters, and the constant changes in the landscape remind me of the unpredictability of nature and the thrill of exploring new terrains. It's like a metaphorical adventure trip. From a technological and philosophical perspective, Alice in Wonderland is fascinating. The book pre-dates the digital age, yet it presents a world that is constantly shifting and where the usual rules don't apply. It's almost prophetic in how it mirrors today's digital landscapes where realities are fluid and often user-defined. Philosophically, it raises interesting questions about perception, reality, and identity. Carol was really ahead of his time. Absolutely, Beth. And those philosophical themes intersect beautifully with history and art, which Carol was undoubtedly influenced by. The book is a tapestry of different ideas and concepts. It's amazing how a single story can offer such diverse interpretations and insights. That's the beauty of a book like, Alice in Wonderland it's timeless and open to endless exploration, much like the adventures it describes. Yes. And it's a testament to Carol's genius that we can still find new meanings and discussions in his work, even after all these years. It's a book that continues to inspire and provoke thought across various fields. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so there's a lot there. Um, Marie, you mentioned uh, the surreal aspect of it. Um, I haven't thought of it before, but, um, but there's a certain quality of Cervantes and Don Quixote in it. Um, do you think that's true? Um, or what other books um, can any of you think of that may have influenced Alice in Wonderland? That's an interesting comparison you've made with Cervantes, Don Quixote. Both Alice in Wonderland and Don Quixote delve into worlds where reality is distorted, and the lines between sanity and insanity are blurred. In Don Quixote, the protagonist's chivalric fantasies create a surreal world much like Alice's adventures in Wonderland. As for other influences, I think Carol might have been inspired by the fairy tales and folklore of his time. The structure of Alice in Wonderland has parallels with traditional fairy tales, where the protagonist goes on a journey in a fantastical world. I'd also suggest that Alice in Wonderland could have been influenced by the rapid societal and scientific changes during Carol's time. The Industrial Revolution was transforming societies, and the scientific advancements were challenging traditional beliefs and perceptions of the world. This context might have influenced Carol to create a world where the usual rules of logic and order were turned upside down. Adding to that, 
there's a sense of mathematical and logical play in Alice in Wonderland that reflects Carol's background as a mathematician. The book is filled with riddles, puzzles, and logical paradoxes. It's possible that Carol was influenced by mathematical concepts in the emerging field of symbolic logic. This aspect of the book certainly sets it apart from other fantasy tales of its time. I think uh, Lewis Carroll, as a mathematician, wanted to put as many riddles and logic puzzles as he could into the book. Um, but your point about the Industrial Revolution is interesting, and then that contrasted with the Victorian a uh, era. Uh, let's talk more about um, that and what the intent of the book on the, on, the, on the rapid change in society. That's a fascinating angle to explore. Carroll lived during a time of significant societal and technological change. The Industrial Revolution was reshaping the world in profound ways, and Victorian England was grappling with these changes. In Alice in Wonderland, you can see elements that reflect this societal upheaval. The constantly changing rules and unpredictable nature of Wonderland could be seen as a metaphor for the disorienting changes happening in the real world. Exactly, and consider the character of Alice herself. She's constantly adapting to new situations and questioning the world around her. This could be reflective of the Victorian era's quest for understanding and adapting to new societal norms and scientific discoveries. The book, in a way, mirrors the sense of wonder and confusion that comes with rapid change. There's also an element of satire in Carroll's work. He was known for his wit and humor, and it's possible that Alice in Wonderland was a subtle commentary on the absurdities and contradictions of Victorian society. The nonsensical laws and illogical behaviors of Wonderland's inhabitants could be seen as a critique of the rigid, yet often paradoxical, societal norms of the time. And let's not forget the industrial and technological advancements of the era. The book was published in 1865, a time when the world was rapidly modernizing. The disorienting and whimsical world of Wonderland might also be interpreted as a response to the bewildering pace of technological progress, something that continues to resonate with readers even today. Indeed, it's like Carol was using Alice in Wonderland to explore the complexities of a world in transition. The book serves as a sort of mirror to the Victorian society, reflecting its curiosities, its anxieties, and its transformations. Let's talk about some of the different chapters in the book. Each, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, each chapter is somewhat contained as its own little vignette. Um, there's scenes like Alice falling down the water or the, the rabbit hole, um, her eating and drinking that change her shape, the pool of tears, the, the caterpillar, um, the tea party, um, the croquet match, um, the mock turtle. Um, which of these scenes or others were your favorite and why? My favorite has to be the scene with the Cheshire Cat. The cat's ability to appear and disappear at will and its enigmatic conversations with Alice are a brilliant display of Carol's flair for the surreal. The Cheshire Cat's dialogues are filled with paradoxes and riddles that challenge our understanding of reality and perception. It's a delightful and thought-provoking vignette that encapsulates the essence of the entire book. Um. Outside of the rabbit, um, the Cheshire, Cheshire Cat was probably the most iconic and well-known character. I have a soft spot for the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. It's such a whimsical and chaotic scene. The way time is manipulated, with it always being tea time, and the nonsensical banter between the Hatter, the March Hare, and the Dormouse, it's just pure, unadulterated fun. It's a perfect example of how Carol plays with logic and absurdity. For me. It's Alice's encounter with the caterpillar. This scene is significant because it's where Alice begins to question her own identity. The caterpillar's questions and the conversation they have about change and growth resonate with the themes of transformation and adaptation. It's a profound moment that always makes me reflect on the nature of self and the process of growing up. Those are great choices. Each chapter, as you said, is like its own vignette offering a unique lens through which to view the larger themes of the book. Whether it's the absurdity of the tea party or the philosophical musings of the caterpillar, each scene adds a distinct flavor to the story, making Alice in Wonderland the rich and enduring work that it is. And let's not forget about the scene where Alice grows and shrinks after eating and drinking certain things. 
It's such a vivid representation of the confusion and unpredictability of childhood, and of growing up in general. The physical changes Alice undergoes mirror the internal changes we all experience as we navigate the complexities of life. Absolutely. And the pool of tears scene is another standout for me. It's a powerful metaphor for the overwhelming feelings we can sometimes experience, and how those feelings can impact not just ourselves but those around us. It's a poignant reminder of the emotional journey of growing up. Speaking of metaphors, um, let's talk about some of the symbolism in Alice in Wonderland. Symbolism is abundant in Alice in Wonderland. One prominent symbol is the act of falling down the rabbit hole, which represents the transition from the known to the unknown, from reality to fantasy. It's a journey into the subconscious, mirroring the process of growing up and the shifts in perception and understanding that come with it. And then there's Alice's fluctuating size, which could symbolize the changes and uncertainties of childhood and adolescence. How she feels too big or too small at different times can be seen as a metaphor for the awkwardness and discomfort that often accompany growth and self-discovery. The Cheshire Cat is another symbol, perhaps representing the elusive nature of truth and understanding. Its ability to appear and disappear at will, and its cryptic remarks, can be seen as a commentary on the often confusing and contradictory nature of the world, especially as perceived through the eyes of a child. The elusive nature of reality and the power of imagination. Yes. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party might symbolize the absurdity of social rituals and conventions. The character's nonsensical behavior and illogical rules during the tea party could be Carol's way of satirizing the rigid and often arbitrary societal norms of the Victorian era. The Queen of Hearts and her constant decree of, off with their heads, could symbolize the authoritarian rule and the lack of justice prevalent in society. Her irrational and tyrannical behavior is a stark contrast to the innocence and reasonableness of Alice. And let's not overlook the game of croquet using flamingos and hedgehogs, which could be symbolic of the arbitrary and bizarre nature of power in the law. The game's ridiculous and unfair rules reflect the often absurd and unjust legal and political systems. <laughs> yes, the croquet game with the flamingos is so strange. The White Rabbit is a pivotal character in Alice in Wonderland. He's the catalyst for Alice's adventure, leading her into Wonderland. I see the White Rabbit as a symbol of curiosity and the desire to explore the unknown. His constant hurry and checking of the time could also represent the pressures of societal expectations and the relentless passage of time in the Victorian era. I agree with Marie. The White Rabbit's role as the initiator of Alice's journey reflects our own innate curiosity and the human impulse to seek out new experiences and knowledge, even when the path is uncertain. His perpetual lateness and anxiety might also symbolize the stress and chaos of modern life, a theme that is still relevant today. There's also an element of mystery to the White Rabbit. His actions are unpredictable and he seems to operate by his own set of rules, which is intriguing. He draws Alice into a world where the normal rules don't apply, symbolizing perhaps the journey from childhood innocence into the more complex and confusing world of adulthood. That's a good point, Beth. The White Rabbit can also be seen as a representation of the elusive nature of truth and understanding. Just like Alice chases after him, we often chase after answers and meaning in life, only to find that the journey is filled with twists and turns and the answers are not always clear or straightforward. He's like a guide, leading Alice and by extension, the reader through the various absurdities and wonders of Wonderland. The White Rabbit challenges Alice's, and our, perceptions of reality and encourages a deeper exploration of the world around us. Exactly, and the White Rabbit's distinct personality and behavior make him an unforgettable character. He adds to the whimsical and unpredictable nature of the story embodying the adventure and uncertainty of exploring new territories, both literally and metaphorically. Yes, the White Rabbit is a, really an unforgettable character. Um, let's talk about another unforgettable character, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is indeed one of the most memorable characters in Alice in Wonderland. He embodies the absurdity and unpredictability of Wonderland. His character could be seen as a commentary on the madness and illogic of the world. 
The Mad Hatter's disjointed conversation style and erratic behavior challenge our conventional understanding of logic and order. Also, there's a historical context to the Mad Hatter that's quite interesting. The phrase, mad as a hatter, was common in Carol's time, often used to describe hatters who suffered from mercury poisoning, as mercury was used in the hat-making process. This could have influenced Carol's depiction of the hatter as, mad. From a technological and philosophical perspective, the mad hatter represents the challenge of understanding a world that doesn't follow traditional rules. His tea party, where time stands still and the characters engage in nonsensical dialogue, could be seen as a metaphor for the human struggle to make sense of an increasingly complex and absurd world. And let's not forget the Mad Hatter's famous riddle. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Carol's inclusion of a riddle without an answer is in itself a playful challenge to the reader. It invites us to embrace the uncertainty and to find comfort in the unknown, rather than being frustrated by it. That's an excellent point, Marie. The Mad Hatter's character challenges us to think outside the box and to question the norms. His presence in the story adds a layer of whimsical yet profound commentary on the nature of reality and perception. In a way, the Mad Hatter also symbolizes the freedom of thought and the joy of letting one's imagination run wild. His character encourages us to look beyond conventional wisdom and to explore the endless possibilities of the mind. Um, speaking of imagination, um, let's talk about the influence of Alice in Wonderland. Um, we can talk about it generally, um, but let's talk about it, about its influence on literature or on specific authors. Alice in Wonderland has had an immense influence on literature and on numerous authors. Its blend of fantasy, whimsy, and logic has inspired writers to explore similar themes in their works. Authors like James Joyce, for instance, have been influenced by Carol's playful use of language and narrative structure. Joyce's Finnegan's Wake is known for its dreamlike narrative and linguistic experimentation, reminiscent of Carol's style. Marie, um, James Joyce and Finnegan's Wake is not one I think I think would have ever occurred to me. Yes, it might seem like an unlikely connection at first glance, but when you delve deeper, the influence becomes more apparent. James Joyce was known for his experimental and unconventional approach to narrative and language, similar to Lewis Carroll. Finnegan's Wake is renowned for its complex wordplay, dreamlike structure, and playful manipulation of language, all of which are elements that can be traced back to Carroll's style in Alice in Wonderland. It's interesting how the influence of a book like Alice in Wonderland can extend beyond the obvious genres. Joyce's work, while vastly different in many ways, shares that sense of breaking the boundaries of conventional storytelling and language, much like Carol did. And it's not just the narrative style, but also the way both authors challenge the reader's perception of reality and play with the concepts of meaning and interpretation. Just as Carol used nonsensical scenarios and language to provoke thought, Joyce used similar techniques to explore the complexities of human consciousness and perception. Exactly, Beth. Both Carol and Joyce invite their readers into worlds where the usual rules of language and logic do not always apply, creating a space for creativity and interpretation that continues to inspire and challenge readers and writers alike. And in the realm of fantasy literature, authors like J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were inspired by Carol's creation of a fantastical world with its own rules and logic. The Lord of the Rings and The Chronicles of Narnia both create immersive worlds that, while different from Wonderland, share the trait of drawing readers into a complete and detailed universe. Carol's influence extends to the genre of absurdism and surrealism as well. Authors like Franz Kafka and later, postmodern writers like Douglas Adams, have elements in their work that reflect the absurdity and whimsical logic found in Alice in Wonderland. The way Carol plays with logic and nonsense has opened doors for writers to explore these themes in more depth. Um, I think Kafka is definitely an apt comparison, and you can see his influence in postmodernism in writers in general. Um, like Paul Auster and Haruki uh, Murakami. This influence is clearly seen in the works of Auster and Murakami, who both create narratives where the lines between reality and the surreal are blurred. 
and in the works of Paul Auster, for instance, there's a clear reflection of this influence. His novels, like the New York Trilogy, often involve elements of metafiction and identity crises, reminiscent of the existential themes in Kafka's work and the identity exploration in Alice in Wonderland. Haruki Murakami's works also embody this surrealistic and metaphysical exploration. His novels often feature ordinary characters who find themselves in extraordinary, dream-like situations. This juxtaposition of the mundane and the fantastic is something that resonates strongly with Carol's approach in Alice in Wonderland. It's fascinating to see how Carol's and Kafka's influence permeates through different genres and eras. Inspiring authors to explore the complexities of reality, identity, and the human experience in innovative and thought-provoking ways. Also, Carroll's impact on children's literature cannot be overstated. He revolutionized the genre by creating a child protagonist who was curious, intelligent, and capable of challenging the adult world. This has paved the way for more complex and empowered child characters in literature, influencing authors like Roald Dahl and J.K. Rowling. In terms of cultural impact, Alice in Wonderland has inspired not just writers but also filmmakers, artists, and musicians. Its themes of exploration and questioning the status quo resonate across various forms of artistic expression, making it a timeless piece that continues to inspire creativity. Absolutely, and the psychological depth of the book has intrigued many writers and thinkers. The exploration of identity, perception, and reality in Alice in Wonderland has influenced not only literary works but also philosophical and psychological studies, contributing to discussions about human cognition and consciousness. Uh, yes, yes. Um, let's talk about the influence of Alice in Wonderland, like Charles was saying, on filmmakers and artists and musicians. musicians. The influence of Alice in Wonderland on filmmakers is quite remarkable. Many filmmakers have been inspired by the book's surreal imagery and narrative style. Tim Burton's adaptation of Alice in Wonderland is a prime example, capturing the whimsical and bizarre essence of Carol's world. The visual representation of Wonderland in film has often been a playground for artistic expression, utilizing imaginative and groundbreaking special effects and animation techniques. In the realm of art, Alice in Wonderland has inspired countless artists. Its vivid imagery and fantastical elements lend themselves to diverse artistic interpretations, from surreal and abstract art to more literal representations. Salvador Dali, for example, created a series of illustrations for Alice in Wonderland that capture the dreamlike and absurd quality of the story. And when it comes to music, the influence of Alice in Wonderland can be seen in a variety of genres. Many songwriters have drawn inspiration from the book's themes of exploration, identity, and the questioning of reality. Rock bands like Jefferson Airplane with their song, White Rabbit, have explicitly referenced Carol's work, using it to explore themes of altered consciousness and societal change. It's also worth noting the influence of Alice in Wonderland in popular culture and fashion. The iconic images of Alice, the Mad Hatter, and the Queen of Hearts have been reimagined in various forms, from clothing designs to themed parties. The book's enduring popularity has made its characters and themes a part of our collective cultural consciousness. Absolutely, and the story's appeal to both children and adults alike has ensured its continued relevance. Alice in Wonderland challenges the imagination and encourages a sense of wonder, making it a rich source of inspiration for creatives in various fields. Indeed, the timeless nature of Carol's storytelling, with its blend of whimsy, depth, and philosophical inquiry, continues to captivate and inspire new generations of artists, filmmakers, and musicians, each finding their own unique way to interpret and reimagine this classic tale. Marie, um, can you talk more about the influence on fashion? I really wasn't aware of that. Certainly. Alice in Wonderland has had a notable influence on the fashion world. The whimsical and fantastical elements of the story have been a rich source of inspiration for designers. The iconic imagery of characters like Alice, with her classic blue dress and white apron, the Mad Hatter with his extravagant hats, and the Queen of Hearts with her bold, regal attire, have all been reinterpreted in various fashion collections. 
The motifs from the book, like teacups, playing cards, and rabbits, are often incorporated into designs. In addition to clothing, Alice in Wonderland has inspired various thematic fashion shows and photo shoots. These often capture the dreamlike and sometimes eerie atmosphere of Carol's narrative, creating a visual experience that transcends traditional fashion. Uh, let's talk about the philosophical elements of Alice in Wonderland. I know we have already, but let's do a little more and the relevance uh, of it to today. One of the most striking philosophical elements of Alice in Wonderland is its exploration of identity and self-perception. Alice constantly questions who she is throughout the story, especially as she undergoes physical transformations. This mirrors the existential question of, who am I? That is still very relevant today, as we navigate our own identities in a rapidly changing world. Another philosophical aspect is the challenge to conventional logic and the questioning of reality. The nonsensical nature of Wonderland forces Alice to reconsider her understanding of the world. This aligns with today's philosophical inquiries into the nature of reality, perception, and the limits of human understanding, especially in the age of digital technology and virtual realities. Carol's use of paradoxes and absurdities in the narrative also reflects the philosophical concept of absurdism, which suggests that the search for meaning in life might be inherently futile. This idea resonates in our modern world, where people often find themselves grappling with the seeming absurdities of life and the universe. Additionally, the theme of growing up and the loss of childhood innocence in Alice in Wonderland has philosophical undertones. It raises questions about the nature of adulthood and the societal expectations placed on individuals as they grow. This theme remains relevant as each generation confronts these universal aspects of human experience. The book also touches on themes of power and authority, especially in the characters of the Queen of Hearts and the King. Their arbitrary and often tyrannical rule can be seen as a critique of unchecked power and the absurdity of certain political structures, a theme that remains pertinent in contemporary discussions about governance and power dynamics. Furthermore, the fluidity of time and space in Wonderland challenges our perception of these concepts reflecting modern philosophical discussions about the nature of time in the universe. Carol's playful yet profound exploration of these themes makes the story a timeless piece that continues to offer insights into our understanding of the world. Charles, um, you mentioned the question of reality, and we talked about the relationship to mathematics. Um, but let's go down that rabbit hole, if you will. Um, and talk about the ideas of Alice in Wonderland as they might apply to the sciences in general and to physics in particular. That's an intriguing thought. Alice in Wonderland, while primarily a work of fiction and fantasy, intersects with scientific concepts, particularly in physics. For instance, Alice's experience of changing sizes can be seen as a playful exploration of scale and perspective, relevant to physics study of the macroscopic and microscopic world. Exactly, and if we consider the rabbit hole as a journey from the known to the unknown, it resonates with the scientific pursuit of exploring uncharted territories, whether it's quantum mechanics or cosmology. The way Alice encounters a world that defies conventional physics mirrors the surprises and challenges scientists face in understanding the universe. And speaking of quantum mechanics, the unpredictable and seemingly absurd nature of Wonderland parallels the counterintuitive principles of quantum theory, where particles can exist in multiple states and behave in ways that defy classical logic and physics. There's also the aspect of relativity. The fluid and distorted sense of time in Wonderland can be related to Einstein's theory of relativity, where time is not a constant and can vary depending on speed and gravity. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party with its concept of time standing still, offers a whimsical analogy to these ideas. Furthermore, Carol's use of paradoxes and logical puzzles in Alice in Wonderland can be related to the philosophical implications of scientific theories. Just as Alice grapples with the nonsensical logic of Wonderland, scientists and philosophers often wrestle with the paradoxes and ethical implications of scientific discoveries and theories. The story also touches upon the idea of observation affecting reality, a concept that is central to quantum mechanics. 
the act of observing a phenomenon can change its outcome. Much like how Alice's observations and interactions in Wonderland seem to influence the world around her. In essence, Alice in Wonderland can be seen as a metaphor for the scientific journey. A quest for understanding in a world that often seems bizarre and incomprehensible, but is also full of wonder and possibility. Carol's imaginative narrative invites us to question and explore, much like the endeavor of science itself. It's interesting how a book written in the 19th century could have ideas appropriated to illustrate ideas like relativity and uh, quantum mechanics. It is indeed fascinating. Alice in Wonderland predates many of the scientific theories and discoveries of the 20th century, yet its themes and narrative structure lend themselves surprisingly well to illustrating complex scientific concepts. This speaks to Carroll's visionary imagination and his ability to transcend the boundaries of his time. The book's influence extends beyond its immediate literary and cultural impact, reaching into realms like science and philosophy, and offering a creative lens through which to view and understand some of the most profound questions and theories of the modern era. And it's not just the thematic content, but also Carroll's storytelling style that resonates with modern scientific ideas. His use of surrealism and the manipulation of time and space in the narrative can be seen as a precursor to the ways in which contemporary science challenges our perceptions of reality. This timelessness and adaptability of Alice in Wonderland demonstrate how literature can have a profound and lasting impact, providing a framework through which we can understand and interpret complex concepts, even those that were developed long after the book was written. Uh, what about the influence, if any, on technology and artificial intelligence? The influence of Alice in Wonderland on technology and artificial intelligence, I, is quite profound. The book's exploration of logic, paradoxes, and the questioning of reality aligns with the challenges faced in developing AI. AI systems, like the characters in Wonderland, often operate on complex logic and algorithms that can seem as whimsical and unpredictable as the events in Carol's narrative. And Carol's work, with its themes of identity and transformation, resonates with the current exploration in AI regarding self-learning algorithms and the development of machine consciousness. The way Alice navigates Wonderland and learns from her experiences can be likened to the way AI systems learn and adapt over time. There's also a connection in the realm of natural language processing, NLP. Carol's playful use of language, riddles, and puns presents a unique challenge for AI, inspiring advancements in how machines understand and process human language. The nuances and complexities of the dialogue in Alice in Wonderland provide a rich resource for training and testing NLP algorithms. In the realm of robotics and AI ethics, Alice in Wonderland offers a philosophical framework to explore the implications of creating entities that can think and learn. The book raises questions about the nature of consciousness and reality, which are central to discussions about the future of AI and its role in society. And let's not forget the impact on educational technology. The story's appeal to both children and adults makes it a valuable tool for developing educational software that combines learning with imaginative exploration utilizing AI to create personalized and engaging educational experiences. I believe, Alice in Wonderland has influenced technology and artificial intelligence, inspiring advancements in areas such as self-learning algorithms, natural language processing, virtual reality, robotics, AI ethics, and educational technology. Alice in Wonderland is part of the technological imagination zeitgeist. Yeah, um, Alice in Wonderland is part of the technological imagination zeitgeist. Uh, well said. Um, I think that's a good place to end our discussion, though. Um, it's fascinating how a story written in the 19th century remains so pertinent and thought-provoking today. It's a testament to Carol's genius and the universal appeal of his themes, exploration, identity, and the questioning of reality. Absolutely. And let's not forget the joy and wonder that Alice in Wonderland brings. It encourages us to question and explore, to embrace the absurd and the unknown. Indeed, Beth, it's a reminder of the importance of creativity and open-mindedness. Alice in Wonderland invites us to see the world through a different lens, 
one that is filled with possibilities and wonder. Especially as we continue to navigate a world that's often as unpredictable and surreal as Wonderland, Carol's work provides a valuable perspective. It reminds us to embrace change, explore the unknown, and appreciate the journey of discovery. And lastly, the discussion today highlights the beauty of literature and its ability to connect with people across generations and disciplines. Definitely. I want to say thank you so much, Bill, for moderating this discussion. It's been an absolute pleasure. Delving into the depths of Alice in Wonderland and exploring its various interpretations and influences has been incredibly enriching. Yes, it's been fun. Indeed, and it's discussions like this that highlight the beauty of book clubs, bringing together diverse viewpoints and allowing us to see familiar stories in new lights. I'm leaving this meeting with a renewed appreciation for Alice in Wonderland and its enduring legacy. Yes, um, I want to thank each of you for bringing such great insights today. All right, so, okay, next time we will... <laughs> I'm, I've decided that we will be discussing Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Um, that should be a great discussion. Um, so until next time, so long.